This is the class A amplifier. This is at, at its big, most basic level. This is what it looks like. Uh, the active element conducts 100% of the time. What does that mean? It means that the MOSFET is always on. We are always passing current through it and using it to output the sine wave. And you're you're saying, Jim, of course you would do that. Why wouldn't you do that? Why would you want to turn it off? Then you don't get the wave. You'd be right. Um, we'll look at amplifiers that think, well, I'll just turn it off and be fine. Um, and this is great, but it is very inefficient. The reason we don't use it everywhere, even though it sounds great, is because it's 25 to 50% efficiency. Sometimes in practice, that's the highest theoretical efficiency it, for different designs. It, it's uh, 25 to 50%, 25 for a single ended, and 50% for a push pull, which we'll look at in a second. Um, but basically, in practice, it can be like 12%. We're talking like 12% of the power you put into it is what you get out of it. Super inefficient, very terrible, could never use this in your phone. Your battery would die instantly. It'd be terrible, not instantly, but it'd be terrible. Um, Why is that efficient? inefficient? It's really inefficient because this um, MOSFET is always on, the power, this power that's flowing through it is always on, and we have to, uh, we have to push the power through the whole time. So it's inefficient compared to what we're going to see. So the circuit is always on. Yes. Okay. Well, oh, well, the switch is not, I mean, the switch varies, right? We talked yes. about how the electrons pile so up. The source, yeah, so yes, the source is always on. Yes. Okay. Well, they just turn on well this, no, 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 the source is not, is, it's still varying because it's creating a waveform, right? No. Yes. No, the source is constant. No, 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 no. The power supply is constant. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go to the next slide. This is what happens when you, when you don't apply it all the time. This is 50% application. You see, we only get half the wave. That's because we literally just shut the power off. Like halfway through. Okay, so we have the MOSFET. Goes like this into the MOSFET, right? Here's our gate, and here's our out. Yeah. Right? So the, the power goes like this. We want it to go like this. What happens is the power that's coming from here just shuts off. It just turned off. Yeah, but in the class A, so it is all the time. No, no, okay. In the class A, the power that's coming from here is always on, and this gate is still yes. uh, attenuating or, you know, it's changing. Yeah. Still good. Yeah. I thought you were good. saying the gate was always uh, on. No, that's why I said source. Okay. Transistor source. Sorry, I got, yeah, I got messed up. You were right. Um, and you turned it off in the class B. Um, but for this, another thing is it gets really hot because of all that wasted energy. Um, it's just... The transistor is then going to get hotter. Uh, then you have major problems with li uh, linearity, so you need a really high quality transistor. It gets into that whole cycle of it's expensive. Um, you also are prone to second harmonic distortion with this uh, type of class uh, versus third or others. Um, but it is greatly reduced compared to other compared to other techniques. Other techniques that could look like this. It's pretty useless for music. It's only okay where you care about efficiency so much that you're happy with sacrificing half of the waveform. This is like, if you want to make a beep. So IBM computers use this uh, type of amplifier to make their computers beep back in the day. Not really useful, but I mean it exists. And you just turn off the, the output power supply. So the power supply that goes into the source of the transistor just gets turned off for the half of it. And you can see that it pretty much just doesn't even approximate it. Just takes what the original current is and like whatever standing current goes through is just here. You know, this is like noise and distortion. That's it. Otherwise you get no input or whatever. No output for the second half of the waveform. So you just get the up and then you don't get the down. Class A B is when you combine B and A. You take two B's, you reverse them, and you put them together. It's exactly what it sounds like. So one uh, of our MOSFETs or, uh, one of our MOSFETs outputs the half, the top half of the wave, one of our MOSFETs outputs the bottom half of the wave. And then you take them, and you combine them. It seems so sketchy. It's so sketchy, that's why it's not very, I mean, it's, you can do this really well if you're, if you're using a very good technique to combine them, and you're using like very high quality parts, it can be great. Some of the uh, best amplifiers in the world can use this technique. Um, and you can actually use this technique with, um, with class A, uh, where you have it all, way, all on all the time, but because here you have two separate um, 
places for current, you, you have one on, and then you shut it off, and you put the other one on. And it's used because, because of magic, it, it is uh, more efficient, it uh, is still temperature sensitive, uh, in fact it's more temperature sensitive because the MOSFETs have to vary the same, um, approximately the same, to be able to cover the waveform in the same way. Uh, and you have what's called crossover distortion, uh, which is com from combining the signals, which is super sketchy. And it can be really bad if you have low quality stuff. Questions on this one from the one? It's pretty simple. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of it, but yeah, this, this works. You can do it really well, or you can screw it up royally. Um, it's considered to be a good, happy medium. People are like, this is pretty good. This is, this is probably what we want most of the time in most applications, not audio files. We like class A. Class C, nobody likes this. It's used for radio frequency uh, amplification. It's literally, you just, you don't, you don't even give kind of any kind of a care. It's just, it outputs something. Uh, very high efficiency, very high distortion. It just, it doesn't even really have details about why this happens, and I don't really care because it's not used for audio. This is the low pass filter we talked about already. So again, some of the signal, some of the, the current will be allowed to pass through the capacitor, and some of it won't, and uh, some of it more than others. So this is what makes that sine wave. I want to make sure that this is covered before we go into the next part. It's the last slide, and it is the coolest part, or it's one of the coolest things. This is how class D amplifiers work. This is the amplifier that you see in all of your devices as well. So you have that DAC and the class D amplifier. The Delta Sigma DAC, Class D amplifier, those are the most common. It's also the hardest to understand, but now that we know all this stuff, it should be super easy. So you see we take the input wave, which is an analog sine wave, we apply a triangular wave generator, just kind of a sawtooth. We apply it to it, and we end up getting the pulse width modulated wave. By doing that, you get the, the pulse width modulated wave. That's how you reverse it. it yeah, when you, when you combine them, it will square. How it works, I guess. So now that you have that, super easy, haven't done anything crazy. None of this is done digitally, by the way. I want to make sure that that's clear. Class D does not stand for digital, it's just a letter after C. Um, it's we are not taking any integrals, we are not doing any of that. We're simply using pulse width modulation in an analog form with a varied amplitude. Okay? We're running it through this thing, and then we're throwing it in a low pass filter, and then it goes out to the speaker. Super cool because what can happen is we take the input wave and all we have to do is when it's on, turn it on higher. When it's off, turn it off higher, I guess. Because uh, all we have to do to amplify this is because we get, you know, we get our five volt input, right, that goes up, we take it and to amplify it we put a 12 volt input that goes up. And now we have a bigger one. And this is supposed to be the same width, it's just higher. Sorry, I'm bad at drawing. Um, but you can see here, someone who's not bad at drawing did the same thing. This width is the same, but the height is different. Make sense? Then pass it through the low-pass filter, and your wave is just a bigger version of the other one. This is really cool, but you have two problems. One, you have a triangular wave generator that is uh, being introduced to your signal. So something that audiophiles would claim is bad is don't introduce anything into the signal path that is not signal how people will say it. All that means is that this triangular wave generator has to be perfect. You now have to generate a perfect wave. Ugh, it's never gonna happen. So you got distortion, you got noise, uh, and it means that this, although uh, it is super easy because you literally don't have to do any work, it's just like turning things on and off fast enough, um, and at the right times, and then passing it through an analog voltage filter, you're done. And everything, it's just it's super easy. Once you have this understanding of pulse width modulation, why don't you just not put the low pass filter on the DAC and like combine the two and do the amplification right there so you don't have to introduce the triangular wave? That would be if you had, if the DAC and amp were the same piece of equipment, you might be able to do that. Except that the DAC is usually not able to produce a high enough signal or a varied signal because the amplifier can be very right. Yeah. Your DAC uh, outputs a line level signal, meaning it, it outputs at two volts and that's it. But I mean, like, why not just use that PDLVM rather than having the generator? Often you might, if you have an integrated audio chip where you have your, like, in your phone, they would be probably be the same thing. 
depending on if you need to put it out to different sources, like your speakers and your headphones have to be different sources. That might depend. But uh, you're exactly right. You can reduce the problems by using the approximation we already have and running it through uh, this amplification stage and then uh, the low-pass filter. So the two problems we have with this so far, just so we can go back over this, sawtooth wave has to be perfect, uh, and the switching controller has to be perfectly on time. Otherwise, there's delay or uh, there's problems with, you know, you, you didn't switch at the right time, you didn't switch fast enough, you didn't switch high enough, it has to be perfect. That might be harder than it sounds. Maybe it is. Um, those two things mean that this is actually really terrible for amplifying because you get things that are not your signal input into the signal screen, uh, and all that means is that you end up with noise in your audio. Is this introduces second harmonic distortion, third harmonic distortion, other harmonic distortions, other types of distortion that I won't talk about, and it means that your output is generally going to be less pure than the others. Um, but it's really simple to understand, and it works really well as far as doing it good enough. So this is how your phone does it. This is how your laptop does it. This is how I have an amplifier at home that does this. Um, you can, as long as you have really high quality parts, it can be really great. But you can also do it super cheap too, and you know, get good enough. We got through a ton of content. I always make my presentations too long, and it's so boring. But you guys are, you guys are champs. Um, does this make sense? Good. Let's talk about what you guys are going to get to listen to now. Now you can actually hear all of the cool things we just talked about happening. Um, so I've got, I brought my setup in, and I probably should have had it turned on while I was talking to warm it up, but that's okay. And we know why now I might have to warm it up, right? Is because those resistors are actually changing and they're uh, in linearity as the, the temperature changes. Now we know. Now it's like, oh, I'm going to warm this up. Makes perfect sense. Of course you would want to warm it up, Jim. What the hell? Whereas before you had told me, Jim, what the hell is wrong with you? Why, why does it have to warm up? I mean, there's a lot more room me. Okay, let's talk about what you're going to listen to if you are on digitally. Now is your last time to speak before I'm going to not care about you anymore.